what here's what our people don't realize. What you see standing before you today in Gary ain't nothing like you ever saw in this city ever before in your life. That's right. So what'll happen is the brothers and sisters will pa pull up, they'll pass by, and they think they just looking at some men dressed in some funny purple clothes. What they not realizing is we've been sent by God to help save this pe the people of this city. That's right. And what people don't realize is that the scriptures say that. Get that in Obadiah verse 21. Watch this. The book of Obadiah verse 21. Who are we? We are Israel united in Christ. We're here to teach you so-called blacks of Gary, Indiana, that you are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. You ain't never been black. You ain't never been African-American. You ain't no Muslim. You ain't no Christian. Right. You are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. That's, That's right. It's just that simple. And as the Israelites, it's time for you to come back to your God. Not the God that they've been taught us in these raggedy churches that's taking the people money all throughout Gary, but the God of the Bible. Read that. The book of Obadiah, verse 21. Uh-huh. And saviors. And what? And saviors. Read. Shall come up on Mount Zion. What you see right now is the men that have been sent and deployed to the city to save the people from this current condition. When I say current condition, I mean the heavy drug use that go on through Gary. The defiled people that's all throughout the city, the gang banging, the murders, the dilapidation that you see around us. This is oppression. Our job is to teach y'all and get you out of that oppression. That makes sense? Let me ask you something. You grew up in this city, right? You been to church? When you was in church, what nationality did they teach you you was? They was mainly talking about a white man. Why? How could that be in a in a city full of black people that our savior don't have to look like us? Bring it out. Where where are you? You seem like you're pretty smart. Where does the Bible take place? I mean the setting. Where does it take place? A lot of people not really into the Bible. You know why? Because you can't relate to what's in the scriptures. Give me that in Isaiah. Yes, sir. The ox. I'm going to show you something. If you got a little bit of time, stay and learn. This could change your life forever. What you're learning right now is the most important thing you will ever learn. That's right. Remember, before we got here, we were over in another country doing our own thing. What you see black people do today, that ain't our culture. That's not what we do. Us going here and buying pig's feet and us uh, shopping and buying and selling on the side. All of that was never us. That was taught to us during slavery. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1 and verse 3. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Listen to what the Bible says about us as a people. Go ahead. The ox knoweth his owner. So listen, it says an ox. When a man owns, a, owns an ox, right, the animal, that ox knows who's it, who his owner is. Why? Because that owner feed him every day, take care of him. So if it was 10 people in the crowd, the ox know who he belonged to. Read. And the ass. His master's crib. And the same thing with a donkey. If a donkey get lost, he know how to make his way home. He know what his homeland is or what his house is. Stay with me, read. But Israel does not know. But the Israelites are walking around the earth. They don't know who they master are or where their homeland is. We think we African-American. We think we black. We think we niggas. That's why it's easy for one man that's black to kill another man. Because when I look at you, I don't see God. I see another nigga. So guess what? I can, I can sell drugs to another nigga. You get what I'm saying? I can sleep with a bunch of sisters if I don't see them as the Israelites of the Bible. What has happened is we have been, our identity has been stripped from us. Today we here in Gary, Indiana for the first time of many to give you your identity back. That's right. To show you who you are. To some people there's no value in that. But to us, it'll change our community forever. Imagine the little boys and little girls can look in the mirror with some self-esteem, knowing who they are. Here's the question. What's the significance of us saying that the so-called blacks are the Israelites? Does that mean something? Let me show you. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Yes, sir. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. What's the significance of you so-called blacks actually being the Israelites? We gonna read it right now. Read that. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Bible says that the Israelites are actually a holy people to the Lord our God. We ain't just some regular people. Why you think everything we touch prosper, even in wickedness? Look at basketball. It's all over the playoffs. On who on the court playing all the ball? Us. When you look at the NFL, who's who's running the balls down the field? Us. Everything I hear and touch, the music.
America today, we refuse to keep the commandments of God. Because it ain't cool no more. It ain't swag no more. But it's what we should be doing as the Israelites. Why I read it again? For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. Look, when you look at yourself in the mirror, know that God chose you. He could have chose any nation on the earth. He chose y'all as the Israelites. Read. To be a special people unto himself. So out of all the nations, he chose one group of people. Who is that? The 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Bring it out. Now they calling themselves Hispanics and African Americans and black. But God said you a holy person. Not holy in the sense of the Christian church shouting and jumping up and down, but holy in the sense of chosen by God to keep his commandments. Black people ain't meant to be in the state that we in today in Gary. Begging for jobs. Trying to make a way, living paycheck to paycheck. Got to ride a bike to get with the uncle to go work. On the Lord's Sabbath day, that not, that's not the life that God intended for us to live. But we chose this life and we chose to be disobedient and break God's commandments. The thing is, we're living in the last days. So when we say we're living in the last days, that means what you know as Gary, Indiana, what you know as America, it ain't going to be here too much longer. Teach. That's the reality. We hear the saying of people and get a people warning because everything you see around you is about to be destroyed. Everything, save more, KFC, all the downtown, Gary, it's all going bye-bye. And only those that are repentant and will keep the commandments will be saved. That's the reality that your pastor ain't telling you. Ain't no more sowing seeds for blessings. It's about you getting your spirit right. That's the reality. Keep reading. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Listen to this next part, read. Above all people. What does the Bible say? Above all people. So if the Bible says that the Israelites are supposed to be above all people, why are we living like this? You're telling me the God that created the heavens and the earth, right, chose us, but this is the condition that we live in? All because we broke God's commandments. All because we broke God's commandments. Watch this. Give me Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 20. Today, Gary, Indiana, getting a small glimpse of what's coming. Because today you're going to learn your nationality and everything that they ever stole from you. We think that living in these conditions that we live in is normal. To go into a grocery store and you smell the meat section before you even get through the door. When all your businesses are owned by people of other nations. When they go to the white neighborhoods and buy goods and then bring them back to the ghetto and mark the prices up and charge you triple what they paid for. We think that's normal. Look, we think baby mama, baby daddy is normal. You don't know something crazy about that? That a dude will lay with multiple women and have multiple kids and not take care of them? That ain't normal? We think girlfriend and boyfriend and popping pills and getting high and getting drunk is normal. That ain't normal, brothers and sisters. That's right. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 20. Yes, no, this day the prophets came to Gary to teach you right from wrong. Whether you hear or whether you fulfill, read that. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, what is the bread of adversity? Look around you. Look at your surroundings. This is that bread of adversity. These conditions that we've been setting in, sister, is that bread of adversity. This ain't normal the way we live. To have to use all your food stamps in the store and then go to that same store and use store credit for your next month food stamps just to make it through the month. To have to rob, steal, and kill just to get a plate of food at night. That ain't normal. That's that bread of adversity. Last hired, first fire. No job opportunities where a man can take care of his family. What a black man work at in Gary, Indiana, where he can sustain a living? Wait, I gotta go in the store. You tell me what job hiring? That 
ain't gonna pay you crumbs. How you supposed to take care of a wife, two, three kids, and they paying you nine dollars an hour? That's the bread of adversity that face the people of Gary, Indiana. You so-called blacks. Read in the water of affliction. What's the water of affliction? Trayvon Martin. Mike Brown, Tamir Rice. These are the afflictions that a people that we as a people suffer. The Lord said, I gave you affliction in this place. Read it from the top. Verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, the bread of adversity we mentioned, go ahead. And the water of affliction. We drink the water of affliction every day. Just to try to keep the lights on, we drink water of affliction. Go ahead. Yet shall not the teachers be removed into a corner anymore. He said, even though I gave you adversity and affliction, I'm going to send teachers to teach you the right way. The thing is, a lot of people ain't going to see us as teachers. They're going to see us as just a bunch of niggas on the corner yelling. Not knowing that we got the solution to solve all the problems in the black community. Every problem we face in our community can be solved through the Bible. Everyone. You think I'm lying? Come up and try me. Read. But that eyes shall see thy teachers. Today your eyes see your teachers. You should have questions. Why we live like this in Gary? Why we don't own our own business? Why downtown Gary look like Iraq? Gary look like a war zone on the east side. You think you in a whole other country riding through here. But we accepted it as normal already. Why? Because a lot of you Negroes is comfortable. Oh, I got my car. I got my house. Hey, I make my little money. But look at the community that's around you. Look at the adversity you got to go through just to keep food on the table. And you telling me men come to Gary with solutions and you don't want to hear it. Shame on Gary, Indiana. Read that again. Verse 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity uh -huh. and the water of affliction, Read. yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. Read. But thy eyes shall see thy teachers. That your eyes will physically see the men that you should be learning from. Not these Christian pastors out here stealing the people money. They are not your teachers. Read. And thy ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, What will your ears hear a man saying? This is the way. This is the way. To keep God's commandments is the perfect way. Read. Walk ye in it. And if our people would just walk in it, we could prosper as a people. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.